Hello everyone. I am going to do a separate little video for our review of some immune system questions. So um, hopefully you've had an opportunity to read through this in your textbook. Um, hopefully watch the pre-recorded session that I've posted um, here in the um, video discussion section of Unit 3. And this is to kind of bring it all together. So listen, I'll post the questions. Um, you can read through them or I'll read them to you and then pause it and see if you can honestly answer which answer it is. And then I will give you the answer shortly after. And if you weren't able to get it, then it's just can be a clue for you to go and look up that information again and make sure you do know it because these are similar to the kinds of questions that some of them that you'll find on our test. So first question is you've fallen ill to the flu virus. So which of the following cells would be active during the immune response? So you've been exposed to the virus, you're now sick. Which of these cells would be active in your body? Phagocytic cells, T cells, natural killer cells, or all of the above answers are correct. So the correct answer would be all of the above answers are correct. And that is because once you're sick with something, your um, immune system has been fully activated. So all of those first line of defense cells as well as the adaptive immunity would have been kicked into gear to try to clear this pathogen out of your body. All right, I'm going to find our second immune system question. True or false, antibiotics are effective against viruses. Answer is false. So if you've ever been told you need antibiotics when you have a cold virus or the flu, unless it has also developed into um, a bacterial infection, antibiotics will not be effective against a virus. In fact, it's one way that overuse of antibiotics has occurred in our society and um, is making them less effective to fight the pathogens we want them to fight. Next question. Question three, true or false? Vaccines are effective at preventing many common viral illnesses. Uh, the topic of vaccines are a very uh, big thing on social media right now because of the re-emergence of some preventable illnesses. So this is true. A lot of common viral illnesses are um, prevented by being vaccinated. Question number four. This type of immune system cell will actually enter infective, infected body cells and kill it. So essentially making it burst. So which one of these types of immune system cells will actually enter the body cell when it's been infected by something to destroy it? Would that be, oh, pardon my uh, spelling mistake there, <laughs> helper T cells? Or would it be B cells, phagocytic cells, or cytotoxic T cells? And the answer is cytotoxic T cells. All right, immune system question five. What is the main cause of many pathogens evolving into strains that are harder to kill? So you do hear about this a lot in the media. Um, 
illnesses like MRSA is a type of bacteria that's resistant to common antibiotics that we use to kill it. So what causes that to happen? Is it different pathogens merge together to make a new pathogen? Is the main cause the medications used to kill the pathogen? Another spelling error. Or is it genetic engineering of animals and pathogens? So the answer is, and I gave a clue earlier, it's actually the medications used to kill the pathogen. So by using these medications, it's allowing bacteria and viruses um, that are per perhaps more resistant to it to continue to live, and therefore it's evolving in order to be resistant to it. So especially viruses, we always have to be on the ball with uh, new vaccines. An example could be um, HIV medications or uh, bacterias, like methicillin resistant staph. All right, we'll move on to the next question. Immune question six. So some diseases are actually the body's own immune system attacking itself. What is the name for these types of diseases? Is it allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease, or cancer? The answer to that is an autoimmune disease. Next question, anaphylactic shock is an autoimmune disease, has no treatment, occurs when blood vessels suddenly constrict, raising blood pressure dangerously, or it causes blood pressure to drop drastically. So which of these would be a, a, a fair definition of anaphylactic shock? And the answer is it causes blood pressure to drop drastically. So it causes uh, blood vessels to dilate and get bigger in your body. And because of that, um, fluid can start to enter your lungs. And it also uh, brings your blood pressure down to a level in which it's probably not going to be getting enough oxygen or, um, or blood flow to your vital organs. Next question, eight. Where do T cells, T cells identify pathogens? So when T cells are in our body, where are they going to identify um, pathogens? Is it going to be within the blood, within the lymphatic fluid, in the interstitial fluid? So that's the fluid that surrounds the cells or would it be inside the body's cells? And the answer is inside the body's cells. That's where T cells will identify the bad guys. And the next question. White blood cells play an important role in fighting infections, carrying carbon dioxide and oxygen, supporting red blood cells, or blood clotting. The answer is fighting infections. We have a couple of more questions. So a primary immune response is the skin, hair, and mucus, production of cytotoxic T cells, or is it an immune response caused by the first exposure to an antigen, which is another word for a pathogen. 
So a primary immune response. And the answer to that is an immune response caused by the first exposure to an antigen. All right, two more, I think. Which of the following cells produce antibodies? Phagocytes, B cells, <clears throat> T cells, or natural killer cells? The answer is B cells. And last one for our immune system. Sometimes when we are sick, the brain's temperature control center gives us a fever to create a warmer environment that pathogens may not like. So essentially it makes it harder for them to reproduce. So when we take Tylenol for a fever, is it working with or against our immune system? So is it working with our body or is it working against our body? So when we take Tylenol or Advil, it will reduce our fever, but essentially that is actually working against our body's immune system because a fever is actually helping our body fight illness. So that's not to say that sometimes it is safer to take something to reduce a fever if the fever is too high, especially in smaller children, but kind of a low grade, you know, not too high fever can actually be a good thing and help reduce the amount of time you're sick. So the answer for this is actually it's working against our body because it, a fever is our body's way of fighting illness. So that's a few review questions. Um, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to contact me as usual. Um, either through email if it's a private matter or through our Q&A board for Unit 3.